Okay, pet parents, we want to have a little chat about pulmonic stenosis, huh? Well, we're happy to chat about it, so let's rock into it, Piscotti. Now, when we're talking about pulmonic stenosis, we're referring to the pulmonary valve, which is a very specific valve or doorway inside of the heart, and the term stenosis means a narrowing. So if we use our super awesome detective skills, I am the bat vet. Caution, that bat is rabid and does not treat actual bats. We can deduce that pulmonic stenosis means there's going to be a narrowing of the pulmonary valve. When we say the word valve, you can think of those like little doorways inside of the heart, where they open up to let blood go forward in the right direction, and then they close to prevent blood from going backwards in the wrong direction. There's more than one valve inside of the heart. And if we look at this picture of the heart over here, the pulmonary valve sits right between the right ventricle and the pulmonary artery, and it's right here. Look at that tiny little guy. In the land of hearts, the right ventricle is the part of the heart that takes the unoxygenated blood and sends it to the lungs via the pulmonary artery so that the blood cells can exchange the carbon dioxide for oxygen, that way they can deliver the oxygen to the cells of the body so that they can actually survive, which is kind of important. And when pulmonic stenosis occurs, it causes what's called an outflow obstruction, meaning that change in diameter to the valve prevents blood from flowing out of the heart in a smooth and normal fashion. Kind of like a traffic jam, where instead of all the cars moving forward at a normal speed, everything's all congested and backed up because of one a-hole that doesn't know how to change lanes or drive in the middle of rush hour. And that narrowing can happen to a part of the heart that's immediately before the pulmonary valve, it can happen to the valve itself, or it can happen to a part of the pulmonary vessel that's right after the valve, and typically we consider this to be a genetic disease. From a clinical science standpoint, mild cases may not show any clinical signs at all, and severe cases can show signs ranging anywhere from exercise intolerance and fainting to right-sided heart failure and even spontaneous death. Freaking buzzkill over here, man. To diagnose this, if we're really good, we can see evidence of this on x-rays and an ECG, but the way we actually diagnose this is with an ultrasound of the heart, or what us science nerds call an echocardiogram. And unfortunately, there are a couple of breeds that are predisposed to this condition. For the treatment of pulmonic stenosis, mild cases may not require any treatment at all. Now, severe cases are usually going to be treated with a combination of medications that help treat the complications of the heart not being able to push blood forward and some sort of surgical procedure. There's a couple of different interventional procedures to treat pulmonic stenosis, but the most common one is what we call a balloon valvuloplasty. So essentially, we feed a balloon into the valve, we inflate the balloon, that way we increase the diameter of the valve. And the prognosis of pulmonic stenosis depends on the severity of the disease and any complications that happen because of it. 